Marcus Walker, you can stay seated until I tell you to stand up. You're here today to be sentenced for the murder of Jermaine Cools on the 18th of November 2021 for possession of the murder weapon and for an offence of causing grievous bodily harm with intent, contrary to Section 18 of the Offences Against the Person Act, committed on the 1st of July 2022, whilst you were in custody awaiting trial for Jermaine's murder. I'm going to refer to the latter offence as the Section 18 offence. You pleaded guilty to possession of the knife used in the murder on the 18th of March of 2022. You initially pleaded not guilty to the murder, but changed your plea to guilty on the 9th of January of this year. You pleaded guilty to the Section 18 offence on the 10th of March 2023, following the addition of a second count to the indictment which had originally charged you with murder. Attempted murder, forgive me. Marcus Walker, you are here today to be sentenced for the murder of Jermaine Cools on the 18th of November 2021 for possession of the murder weapon and for an offence of causing grievous bodily harm with intent contrary to Section 18 of the Offences Against the Person Act on, committed on the 1st of July 2022 whilst you were in custody awaiting trial for Jermaine's murder. I'm going to refer to that offence as the Section 18 offence. You pleaded guilty to possession of the knife used in the murder on the 18th of March of 2022. You initially pleaded not guilty to the murder, but changed your plea to guilty on the 9th of January of this year. You pleaded guilty to the Section 18 offence on the 10th of March this year, following the addition of a second count to the indictment which had originally charged you with an attempted murder. The statutory surcharge applies to this case. This is yet another case involving the senseless murder of a young teenager committed for reasons that no mature adult can fathom. Jermaine Cools was only 14 when you killed him. He was the youngest victim of fatal knife crime in London in 2021. Tragically, since that date and to this day, there have been many further murders of young teenagers since Jermaine's death. And nothing seems to deter the likes of you from going onto the streets of London and elsewhere, armed with lethal weapons, easily acquired on the internet, intent upon serious violence, with no thought for the consequences for the victims, their innocent loved ones, nor for the consequences for themselves. In the words of your own counsel, this was, quotes, an appalling act of senseless violence, close quotes. The impact of Germain's violent and needless death is immeasurable. His parents have each set out as best they can the devastating effects upon them of the loss of their youngest son. His father says, quote, he was everything to us, a sunshine, a bright light in this world, a humble child with a lot of dreams. Now we are nothing, just wanting to die to be with Jermaine, close quote. He describes how they have put a large picture on Jermaine's bed so that they can pretend that he is still there. 
Jermaine's mother describes how since her beloved son's death, they have, quote, ceased living and just existed. Their home used to be filled with love, laughter and happiness. It's now a sad and empty house. Memories are all they have left. Jermaine will never be forgotten. He was their perfect son. Jermaine was his mother's soulmate. She has not been able to work since his death. She is an empty shell. She also describes a significant impact on Jermaine's older brother. Both his parents have been diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder, depression and anxiety due to their loss. They are both taking medication and receiving counselling. There is no sentence which I can pass which can relieve the pain and loss which you caused. Nothing can bring Germaine back. No term of years can even begin to compensate for his family's loss. My job today is to pass a sentence on you which reflects your culpability for what you have done and to pass the appropriate punishment upon you based upon all the circumstances of this tragic case. The murder and its surrounding circumstances were captured on CCTV and other footage. The facts are these. On the early evening of Thursday the 18th of November 2021, you were out in a busy street in London Road in Croydon with your friends. You had a large machete hidden under your clothing. Another of your friends, Stanley Lopez, was also armed with a large knife. He was disguised with a balaclava. Your group were clearly geared up and ready for serious violence. 14-year-old Jermaine was with his two much older brothers. At 20 to 7 that evening, your group approached Jermaine's group. There was a tussle between your friend Stanley Lopez, who had drawn a knife, and Jermaine's older brother, Deloney, during which Jermaine did no more than to throw a punch. His brother disarmed Lopez of his knife before he was able to use it, and he put that knife out of harm's way. That knife was recovered by police, and I've seen a photograph of it. Jermaine would have had absolutely no idea that you and your friends were armed with lethal weapons, and nor that you were out on that street with the intention of using them. During the tussle, Jermaine stumbled to the floor, and having briefly got to his feet, possibly because he was pushed by one of your group, he fell again. From that moment, he was trapped on the ground, utterly defensive, defenceless, and you chose him as your target. You drew your knife, ran towards Jermaine and stabbed him mercilessly, no less than seven times in his chest, abdomen and shoulder, as he tried hopelessly to avoid the blows by rolling around on the pavement. He didn't stand a chance. He must have been terrified and in agony. You intended to kill Jermaine and you achieved your desire. Having done so, you ran off. Public-spirited members of the public helped Jermaine and drove him to the hospital. Efforts to save his life were fruitless due to the catastrophic loss of blood he had suffered from the wounds which you had inflicted. Two of those wounds were independently capable of killing him. He was pronounced dead at 19.50 that evening. As you fled the scene, you discarded your knife, which has never been found. You lay low for two and a half hours, before taking a taxi to your home in Bromley. You arrived home at about 20 past 10. Your mother was there. In the early hours of the following morning, you left your home on the pretext of going to get food. You didn't do that. Instead, you went and got a taxi and got away from the area. Once you realised you'd gone, your mother checked a tablet which you'd taken from her, and that showed that you'd been involved in the stabbing and engaged in online chats with your like-minded friends who were advising you to get rid of your phone and your clothing to avoid being caught. You took a taxi to Thornton Heath, arriving at quarter past one the following morning. 
you stayed the night at a care home in which a female acquaintance of yours lived. You were last seen before your arrest the following afternoon when you left that accommodation with two females. In the footage from that address, you made sure that your identity was concealed from the CCTV cameras. You were not seen again until six weeks later when on the 28th of December 2021, police attended an address in Upper Norwood to arrest the occupant and quite by chance they found you there. You were spoken to by police, you gave a false name, but eventually admitted who you were and were arrested for Jermaine's murder. You did not answer police questions in interview. You were remanded to Feltham Young Offender Institution. On the 4th of April 2022, an officer found drill lyrics in your cell in which you celebrated the murder of Jermaine. The second serious offence of violence for which I have to deal with you took place on the 1st of July 2022 when you were still on remand for the murder at HMP Felton. You and four other inmates were in the exercise yard at about 10.30. There is poor quality footage of the incident. However, several prison officers were able to describe what took place. Also upon him. How you put mans to sleep, close quotes. When you were restrained, you were shouting, quotes, that's what snitches get, close quotes. To one of your group, Vanushan Balakrishnan, who, like you, was also on remand for murder, you said, quotes, I had to start it, that's what you get. To which Mr. Balakrishnan replied, rest in peace. The two of you were seen to be laughing. You added, quotes, that's what happens to snitches, that's how we wipe them out, close quotes. You were crowing that you had, quotes, smoked him, and as you were locked in your cell, you made gun signs. When your cell was searched, an improvised weapon Your group left him unconscious. He had lost control of his bowels and bladder and vomited while still unconscious. When he briefly regained consciousness, he begged the officers to save his life, saying, quotes, I have a daughter. He then fell back into unconsciousness. He was taken to hospital by air ambulance. He had suffered increased pressure and a bleed to his brain, which was life-threatening and has been life-changing. He underwent lengthy surgery, but is left with permanent and significant brain damage. His cognitive functions are badly affected. He will require lengthy rehabilitation and ongoing long-term input from multidisciplinary teams to support him in reach reaching his full potential. Again, following your arrest, you answered no comment in interview. This is a complex sentencing exercise. You were 16 when you committed the murder. You are now 17. The sentence for murder is fixed by law. In the light of your age, the sentence is one of detention for life at His Majesty's pleasure. I have to set the minimum term which you must serve before you are eligible to be considered for release by the parole board. That minimum term must reflect the seriousness of the murder offence and any offence associated with it. It must also reflect the Section 18 offence. By Schedule 21 of the Sentencing Act 2020, as amended, at paragraph 5A brackets 2, the starting point where a knife was taken to the scene of the murder in circumstances where I am satisfied you took the knife to the scene and you intended to and did use it in committing the murder. The starting point is 17 years. That starting point applies to those aged 
15 or 16 at the date of the offence. You were 16 years and two months. The starting point in your case is therefore 17 years. However, I note that had you been 10 months older, the starting point would have gone up to 23 years. The fact that you were in possession of a machete on the night of the murder is already taken into account in that starting point, as is the fact, as I have found, that you had an intention to kill Germain. There are significant aggravating factors. The first is your previous conviction for possession of a large Rambo-style weapon on school premises on the 27th of January of 2020. You pleaded guilty to that offence and received a nine-month referral order. Secondly, on the 12th of April 2021, in the context of county lines drug dealing, you were found by police to have a hunting knife. You were not prosecuted for that offence, as you were found to have been the victim of modern slavery. Third, on the 6th of October 2021, when on bail for the April matter, and only six weeks before you murdered Jermaine, you were found in possession of yet another lethal knife, this time one with a 50 centimetre blade. You told officers that you always carried knives, as without one you felt that you were walking to your death. You were again bailed. That offence was withdrawn following your guilty plea to Jermaine's murder. I have seen photographs of all those horrific knives, which are sadly typical of those which these courts see on an almost daily basis. There is absolutely no legitimate reason for carrying those weapons, and your possession of them significantly aggravates the seriousness of the offence. Four, you were on bail for two offences of possession of knives and in breach of a bail condition not to enter Croydon. Five, the murder involved a sustained attack on a defenceless 14-year-old child with a deadly weapon in the context of gang violence in close proximity to members of the public. Six, you were under the influence of cannabis upon which I note you were dependent. Seven, you sought to evade capture and were successful in doing so for some six weeks. And finally, the drill lyrics written by you and found in April 2022 do, in my view, demonstrate a lack of remorse on your part, at least at that date. I emphasise that a lack of remorse in itself is not an aggravating factor. The mitigation comes from the very helpful reports which I have read upon you. Those can be found at sections T3 to 7 of the digital case system. The principal mitigation is your youth, although, of course, your age is already reflected in the reduced minimum term. On the 7th of February of 2022, a conclusive grounds decision was made that you were the victim of modern slavery. You ran away from home at a young age and re were recruited into the world of street gangs and exploited. Thus, you became embroiled in dealing drugs in a county lines enterprise. It is an all too familiar picture at this court. That provides background and some explanation, but no excuse whatsoever for you to engage in the sort of violence which you have chosen. You presented to the doctors with the symptoms of complex post-traumatic stress disorder following your childhood experiences, which included the murder of your father, cousin and friends. You also have some traits of conduct dissocial disorder. However, there is no significant impairment in your cognitive functioning. You are, quotes, a complex and vulnerable young man who has experienced a great deal of trauma and abuse in your young life. You have recently shown some regret for what you have done. It was always accepted on your behalf that you were the person responsible for the unlawful killing of Germain. It was, however, necessary for you to be assessed by mental health professionals in order to determine whether the partial defence of diminished responsibility was available to you. Once it became clear that it was not, you were rightly advised that you had no alternative but to plead guilty to murder, and you did so on the 9th of January 2023, 
the day when your trial had been due to start. In all the circumstances, a reduction from the minimum term for the murder of just under one-sixth is, in my view, merited. Your possession of the murder weapon is already reflected in the minimum term starting point. For an adult for such an offence, the relevant guideline gives a starting point of 18 months' custody. Due to your youth, I reduce that term by one-third to 12 months and then further to eight months to reflect your early guilty plea. The group attack upon a fellow inmate in which you played a leading role and which involved significant planning was an extremely serious offence. It was a revenge attack upon a youth who you perceived to be a snitch. The victim suffered particularly grave and life-threatening injury. That offence fell within Category 1A of the relevant guideline with a starting point of, for an adult of 12 years and a range of 10 to 16 years. There are a number of aggravating factors. One, the fact that this was an attack within a custodial setting. Two, the fact that you were on remand, having at that stage pleaded not guilty to Jermaine's murder. And three, your previous offending and criminality. The mitigating factors are those which I have set out above in relation to the murder. I do not repeat them. I note that you had been the victim of violence while in custody, having been stabbed in the head from which you bear a noticeable scar. In relation to this offence, the mitigating factors balance out the aggravating factors. I emphasise that I have guarded against any double counting and borne firmly in mind the youth guideline and the guideline relating to mentally disordered offenders, as well as totality. You were 16 and three quarters at the date of the Section 18 offence. Applying the youth guideline, the notional determinate term is one of eight years, namely two-thirds of the 12-year adult term. You were originally charged with attempted murder to which you pleaded not guilty. You entered a plea to the Section 18 offence on the 10th of March 2023. Your trial had been listed for July. In my view, you deserve 25% credit for plea, which gives a term of six years. I then have to consider the dangerousness provisions. In your case, I am of the firm view that despite your youth and the other matters to which I have referred, on all the facts, you do present a significant risk of serious harm to the public occasioned by the commission by you of further specified offences. The author of the pre-sentence report is of the same view and assesses your risk as very high. In my judgment, acknowledging that a life sentence is a last resort, the Section 18 offence is in itself serious enough to justify a life sentence, and there is no reliable estimate of the length of time you will remain a danger. In any event, of course, you will be serving the life sentence which I will impose for the murder of Germain. The minimum term which I attach to the life sentence for the murder must include a term to reflect the Section 18 offence, as the sentence which I impose for that offence will run concurrently with the sentence on the murder. Having started at 17 years for the appropriate minimum term, I have concluded that the aggravating factors for the murder outweigh the mitigation, and that a minimum term of 19 years would have been appropriate in your case before considering the Section 18 offence. From that minimum term should be deducted three years just under one-sixth, to reflect your plea of guilty, which gives 16 years. Having determined that the notional determinate sentence for the Section 18 would have been six years, I, I propose to increase the minimum term for the murder to one of 19 years to reflect totality. Would you stand up, please? The sentences I pass upon you are as follows. For the murder detention at His Majesty's pleasure, the minimum term before you will be considered for release by the parole board will be one of 19 years. For the possession of the murder weapon, there will be a sentence of eight months detention to run concurrently. For the for causing grievous bodily harm with intent, there will be a discretionary life sentence of detention at His Majesty's pleasure with a minimum term of four years. That sentence will run concurrently to the sentence for the murder. You have spent 497 days in detention on remand, which will count towards your sentence, 
so the minimum term is 19 years less 497 days. If the information which I have been provided with as to the days in detention on remand proves to be inaccurate, then the prosecution or defence must notify the court so that the case can be relisted to correct the calculation as soon as possible and in any event within 56 days of today. You will not be released when you have served that minimum term. Indeed, you will only ever be released if the parole board consider that you no longer pose a risk of harm to the public. That's the sentence for court. He may go down. <laughs>